Hello and welcome back to another Age of Sigmar painting tutorial. In this video I'm going to be showing you how you can paint your Auric Brutes in their yellow and black colour scheme and I'll be using the Citadel range of paints to do so. And here we have the assembled and primed Orc. Now I've primed it using the Army Painters Skeleton Bone Spray Primer. If you don't have access to this, you could alternatively use a normal primer and then go over the top with Games Workshop's Xandri Dust. Now as you can see, I've also kept some of the components separate, such as the, the back and the shoulder pads, the head, and also the front plate of the armor. This makes uh, painting the miniature much easier. Now the first task is to paint over all of the skin areas, and for this we'll be using Death World Forest. As Death World Forest is a base paint, you should have no problem covering the skin areas like I'm doing so here. Just quite liberally applying it. And I've watered it down slightly, which gives me an, a better coverage over the miniature. And once this uh, layer is dried, I'll be uh, painting over it again. Once a good base layer has been achieved, the next step is to paint over the muscles and the skin areas using Strock and Green. For this step, we want to be picking out the raised areas, leaving the darker Death World Forest visible in the recesses. And I've just mixed in a small amount of Lamium Medium into this mix, just to allow it to flow a little bit better. And once the step's dry, I'm going to be going over it again, which will give me a really nice and even surface. So once we've finished applying the Strock and Green over the skin areas, the next step is to improve the definition. And for this, we'll be applying a wash of Athonian Camo Shade. By applying this wash across the skin areas, we are not only improving the definition by improving the shadows in the recesses. We're also blending in the original base layer and the Strock and Green highlight that we applied in the last step. Once the wash is dry, the next step is to apply some very fine highlights along the edge of the knuckles and also some of the top sections of the skin areas and some of the folds in the face as well. And for this we'll be using Nurgling Green. When applying this highlight, you want to focus mainly on the sharp edges such as the knuckles here and just apply very, very thin amounts. I've watered this down slightly as well just to make it less harsh, as you can see there, just done on the knuckles. I'll be doing the same on the other side as well. The next step is to paint some of the dark painted metal areas on the miniature, such as these shoulder pads here, and for this we'll be painting them with Stegodon Scale Green. So I'm painting these dark metal areas, it's a good idea to uh, take a look at some of the pre-painted miniatures to find out exactly which areas you'll be wanting to paint with this. And as you can see, I'm just being quite liberal with the application. Now I've mixed in a small amount of water here, but as it's a base paint, it should cover quite nicely. Now at the moment, the blue on the shoulder pads is a little bit too bright, so we're going to be darkening it using a wash of Non Oil. When applying the wash, you can afford to be quite liberal in the application, making sure that it pulls into all of the recesses and darkens up the metal areas. As you can see, I'm doing here. So as you can see, the wash has had a considerable effect in darkening the blue color of the shoulder pads, which means the next step is to highlight the very edges. And as you can see, some of these raised sections have also been picked out and we'll be uh, highlighting those. And we'll be using Thunderhawk Blue. Now for this step, you want to ensure that you're using a very fine tipped brush. I'm just going to be running this along the edges along the top here. But then also I'm going to be picking out some of these sections here. So very carefully just drag the brush along the lines of the panel beaten armor. We're doing this across anywhere on the miniature which has this kind of metal. The next step in painting the dark sections of the armor is to pick out some of the very uh, sharp edges, such as uh, these around the edges and some of the, uh, the joins across the panel beaten armor there. And we're picking these out with Fenrisian Grey. So using a thin brush, I'm just going to be very carefully picking out these corners here, just at the joins. And also along the top here, these top edges, just picking out any sharp edges across the dark areas. So now that the dark metal areas have been completed, the next step is to paint the black fabric on the trousers here. And for this, I'll be using Abaddon Black. Now, even though Abaddon Black is a base paint, I would still recommend adding a small amount of water in there and just applying two thin coats as opposed to one thick one. You can see here, I'm just uh, being very careful not to spill into the areas we've painted, such as the skin here. Just picking them out like so. Once the base layer of Abaddon Black has been applied, the next step is to highlight the edges using Mechanicus Standard Grey. As with the previous highlights, it's just a case of getting you a thin brush with a small amount of paint on the end and very carefully picking out the folds in the cloth, very gently dragging the brush across the raised edges. The second step in painting the black fabric on the trousers is to apply a second thinner highlight of Administratum Grey. In the previous step, we highlighted the entirety of the folds. This time, we're just going to be focusing on some of the very sharper edges and those that are at the top, 
such as this, uh, these folds on the front here, just simulating where the light is hitting. With the trousers complete, the next step is to paint some of the leather areas. This includes the belt and also the boots there, and any other straps across the miniature. And for this we'll be using Rhinox Hide. Rhinox Hide makes an excellent paint to use when uh, basing for dark leather, as you can see I'm just doing it here. As it's a base paint as well, it should cover really nicely, however, like with the Abaddon Black, I've mixed in a small amount of water and I'll be applying two coats instead of one. Once the base layer has been applied to the leather areas, the next step is to highlight the very edges using Doom Ball Brown. Now by highlighting the edges with Doom Ball Brown, we get this nice deep red colour and it's almost as if it's like a very dark red boot that's been worn along the edges and as you can see here I'm just very carefully picking out these folds in the leather boot with my thin brush here. With the first highlight of Doom Bull Brown completed, the next step is to perform a second finer highlight of Squig Orange. For this highlight we're just going to be wanting to focus on the very tips like so, just along the top of these edges here. and just just accentuates the faded leather effect that we went for in the last step. So the next step is to paint the yellow armor and before we go ahead and actually apply the yellow, the first step is to apply some pre-shading. Now we're going to be doing this using Agrax Earthshade, mix in in roughly 50-50 quantities with Lamian Medium. We'll be targeting this wash into the gaps and the recesses before applying our glaze. Using my Lamian Medium and Agrax Earthshade mix, I'm just going to be carefully applying the wash directly into the grooves like you can see I'm just doing here along this seam. You want to make sure that the Agrax shade isn't too neat in terms of its mixing because we don't want to darken up these recesses too much. So now that the pre-shading has been completed the next step is to apply the yellow and for this we'll be using a wash of Cassandora yellow and we'll be applying this over all of the skeleton bone areas that we want to make yellow. When applying this wash you can afford to be quite liberal as we want to get a really nice bright yellow colour. As you can see I'm just being careful not to overspill onto the areas we've already painted but making sure that it pulls into all of the recesses creating some nice shading at the same time. So as you can see the Cassandora yellow wash has given us this really nice and rich colour to work from and the next step is to highlight along the edges using Dawn Yellow. So as we've already done in previous steps the highlight is just going to be a case of picking out the very edges with a thin brush just carefully dragging the brush along the edge there and just creating this nice bright yellow highlight. The next couple of steps in painting your armour are entirely optional and the first one is to apply some markings to the armour and for this we'll be using a bad and black. Using the Abaddon Black we're going to be painting some flame motifs onto this uh, left knee pad here. I'm just going to be very carefully dragging this thin brush just in a squiggle there, fill it out at the bottom to make a flame and I'll be doing a few more of these across the knee pad. Now that the flames have been completed, the next step is to apply some chipping to the armour and for this I'll be using Rhinox Hide. Instead of using a normal brush this time I'll be using a small piece of foam that I've uh, taken from some packaging and I've dipped it into the Rhinox Hide and removed some of the excess. I'm just going to be uh, focusing uh, this on some of the armour plates, it's just been a dabbing action just along the edges where you'd expect chips to occur. You can see here it just creates this nice mottled effect. I'll be applying this anywhere on the armour where there's likely to be damage such as uh, around the edges of the armour and also around the knee pads for example. The next task in painting our orc is to tackle the wraps around the wrists and also around the weapon handles there as well. And we're painting these areas with Raycar Flesh. You should have no trouble covering these areas with the Raycar Flesh as it's a base paint and also against the light background the base colour that we've already used should cover really nicely as you can just see I'm doing here. At the same time being careful around the hands as we don't want to overspill onto the skin that we've already painted. Once the base coat has been achieved, the next step is to apply some shading in the recesses and for this we'll be using a wash of Seraphim Sepia. When applying the wash we can afford to be quite liberal as we want to give this quite grimy cloth effect. As you can see here it's just discoloring the Raycar Flesh base quite nicely there. I'm just going to be applying this across all the areas that we painted in the previous step. The next step is to highlight the wraps and any other areas that we've painted in the previous steps with Flayed One Flesh. So using the flayed one flesh, we're just going to be picking out the raised sections just along the edges here. Just creating this nice highlight. Just being very careful. I'm using quite a thin brush for this step as uh, these edges are quite thin. Just being very careful. Next we'll be painting the inside of the mouth and also the tongue here. And we'll be painting these areas with a corn red. 
When painting the inside of the mouth, you can quite clearly see the benefits of keeping the head separate as it makes it a lot easier to paint the inside rather than going through the teeth. You can see I'm just being careful not to overspill too much as we don't want the red to show once we've glued the head back on. Just being very careful around this tongue area as well. Once the base coat is dry, we can now wash over the, the fleshy area inside the mouth with Caraberg Crimson. Now the Caraberg Crimson makes for an excellent wash for these red areas as it applies shading in the recesses without dulling down the bright red tone too much. Now finally we'll be highlighting the very tip of the tongue with Wazdaka Red. So I'll just be focusing this highlight to the very tip of the tongue here and if you're feeling confident and have a small enough brush you can also tackle the very small orc eyes with this Wazdaka Red as well. The next area in painting the orc we'll be tackling is to paint both the teeth and the nails and for this we'll be base coating them with Baylor Brown. Now Baylor Brown makes an excellent base coat for painting the teeth and the nails, it gives us really nice yellowing tooth and also nail colour, as you can see I'm just being careful not to overspill onto the skin we've already painted. The next step in painting both the teeth and the fingernails is to highlight them with a Screaming Skull. In order to simulate teeth that have a plaque build up, we're just going to be picking out the edges, the tips of the teeth like so, leaving the yellow visible in the recesses. As you can see I'm just doing here, just picking them out. And this creates a really nice dirty tooth effect. With the teeth and fingernails completed, the next step is to paint all of the metal areas. Now this includes the weapons and also any chainmail across the miniature. And we're painting these first of all with Lead Belcher. Lead Belcher makes a fantastic base coat for these weapons, not only because it's a base paint, which means it covers really nicely, but also because it's quite dark metal. It's one of the darkest uh, silver metals available from the Citadel range, which is brilliant for painting the dark metal that we want on these weapons. The next step in painting our miniature is to wash over the metallic areas with Null Oil. When applying the wash to the metal areas, you can be quite liberal as we want to darken the metal quite a lot, as you can see I'm just doing here, applying it all the way across the blade, and just being careful as I get down to the handles here. I'm doing this across all the metal, so any blades or any chain mail in the miniature as well. When the wash is dry, the next step is to highlight the very edges of the blades and also any metal areas using Runefang Steel. As I apply the highlight, I'll be focusing along the edges of the blades, such as these ones at the top, but I'll be focusing most of my efforts along uh, the actual serrated edges. I'll be using this kind of perpendicular motion towards the edge, like so, just to enhance the sharp effect of the edge. The final area I'll be painting as part of this tutorial are the gold areas. This includes the, uh, any rings on the weapons, the ears, or any adornments on the weaponry. And for this I'll be painting using Retributor Armor. Now as we're using a base paint, it's going to be quite easy to cover these areas. You can see here I'm being careful not to overspill onto the wraps that I painted in the previous step. I should be painting all the gold areas across the miniature in the same way. With the base coat completed, the next step is to wash over the gold areas using Seraphim Sepia. Now Seraphim Sepia is a great wash to use on gold areas as it applies shading in the recesses without dulling down the brightness of the gold too much. Now the final step for painting this miniature is to highlight the gold areas with Auric Armor Gold. So using our thin brush here, I'm just going to be carefully picking out the edges of these gold areas. As you can just about see I'm doing on this adornment at the bottom there. And this Auric Armor Gold's quite bright, so it acts as a really nice highlight. So here we have the finished miniature, who you can see that I've completely assembled now. So whilst I focus on the Auric Brute for this tutorial, you could apply the same techniques and colour scheme across any of the new Auric Iron Jaws. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, do let me know in the comments below, and also subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my future videos. Additionally, if you would like to support me in making more tutorials, you can do so by heading over to my Patreon page, which you'll find a link for in the description below, where you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, and that'll help support me in making future tutorials. So until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.